Well, the onset of fall weather is certainly a welcome occurrence for folks in Silicon Valley, and we've got football on a gorgeous day here in Santa Clara as we are situated at Levi Stadium. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. It'll be Joe Mixon, born in nearby Oakley, California, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, Run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Burrow looking to pass. That's caught by the tight end, Irv Smith Jr. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Back to Mixon on second down. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. 49ers have an extra defensive back on the field. A nickel set for third down. They go play action with Burrow. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. Ray Ray McLeod deep here for the Niners. This is brought in at the 21. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 27. What a pickup this man was last year. It's Christian McCaffrey. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Daxton Hill there to make the stop on defense. All runners count on their eyes to find the gaps and creases to find open space. There was absolutely none on that one. Totally swallowed up on that play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Purdy with it on third and long. And he is caught. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. 
After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now Purdy. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. They'll come up now third and three. Purdy. He's got his man, Jennings. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. Logan Wilson that time there to bring him down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. 15 for the Niners there and a first down. A couple of nice carries back to back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these aren't bare bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yards you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five more, five or more yards each time. That's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line going. Good sign on the opening drive. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And they're knocking on the door now. There's a good run there. Going to take this to about the 10-yard line. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Here's Purdy on first and 10. He'll get this to Jennings over the middle. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. That'll be caught by Ayu. Touchdown, 49ers. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Niners get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Burrow 
on play action. And a little floater there, but it'll wind up incomplete, falling to the ground. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. On the move to his left. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Purdy now to throw off the play action. Got an open man. It's McLeod. And they work this well up field across the 45. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense humming here in the early going. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. Two yards on the pickup there, and that'll bring up second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. And he is going to lose yardage here. They give those two yards right back, and now they're looking at a third and ten. Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Purdy looking to throw. Escaping the pressure right. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. I'm not sure he falls under the category of mobile quarterback, but he's athletic enough that if you don't keep your rush lanes intact, he finds a way to hurt you. As coaches like to say, I wouldn't call him a burner, but enough there in the tank. Play action, now Purdy. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter. From the 35, here's second and six. As they've got it as we resume action. Back to throw, Purdy. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, You've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. Trying for Ayuk, but it's intercepted. 
And the Bengals are going to take possession here at their own 33. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at the 33-yard line. He'll set up to throw from the gun. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. A solid pickup there by Mixon. And when he's running it this way, the Cincinnati offense takes on an extra dimension. They love to run the football and shut people down with Mixon carrying the load. Now Burrow on first down. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Second and a couple. Now they go play action now. Burrow. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he stopped immediately there. Cleveland Furl, former high pick of the Raiders, in on the tackle. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Again, it's Mixon. And he's down into the red zone at the 16 after a gain of 16. First and 10. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Throw right side into the hands of the tight end sample. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Four yards remain on second down. Ball on the 10. Burrow looking to pass. Touchdown, Joe Burrow, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Bengals are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. And I think we always seem to be just a tad surprised when we see Joe Burrow go into the end zone on a running play. He's got so many weapons around him, he tends to distribute the ball and let them carry it across. But he had five rushing touchdowns in the regular season last year, added another in the wild card win over Baltimore. I think he understands he's an extra dimension of their offense closer to the goal line. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The San Francisco's offense returns to the field. They had the interception last drive, led to the tying touchdown. So 7-7 seven, seven to score as they begin first and 10.
Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Purdy from the gun. He'll get this into the hands of Ayuk. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Shotgun now with Purdy. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Sam Hubbard making his presence felt in the backfield. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. On fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to punt the football. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Now it's Burrow. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked up by Ambry Thomas. And the 49ers are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. And he can't escape, and down he goes. There for the sack, B.J. Hill. He found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. Now Mason. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. He's able to get four back on the run, but now they'll have to find something here on third and about 14. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It's fourth down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. First and 10 and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They'll start here with a give to Mixon. And he gets this up just shy of the 15. Trying to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped 10 yards, first down. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was, whatever is in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. Back to Mixon on first down. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he's brought down at the 25-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Yeah. 
And now they will throw it with Burrow. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. It sort of looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Open man is Chase complete. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. This is Mixon on the draw. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. And we're going to stop play here at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury. And we'll be back in a moment. throw that's to chase he's got it touchdown Cincinnati eight yards on the touchdown pass and the Bengals go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points and that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point what a great way to end the half yeah great job to put themselves in front and now See on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Ray Ray McLeod to return. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Well, the Niners going back on offense now late in this first half. With his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half, we'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. On first down, it's Purdy. That's caught by Jennings. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. 
to this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Out of the gun, Purdy. He'll get this to Jennings over the middle. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 33. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And his kick is indeed good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal. Not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front as we send you cross country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Back to the air on second down, Purdy. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 55 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Obviously an important run to avoid the three and out on your own side of the field. Shows a lot of faith in that offensive unit, doesn't it? That you want to run the ball in that situation, pick up the first down, also helps out your defensive guys a little bit too. Allows them to get at least one more series of downs in order to get some rest. Knife's his way forward here, but just three yards on the play, second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Second and seven. Now Purdy. That ball caught. Brandon Ayuk. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 33. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. 
It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. On first down, Purdy. He's got Ayuk once again. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. Back to the ground attack here, it's McCaffrey. Heck of a move, but only able to work his way down near the 23. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? Now they run, it's Mason. And he's gonna be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. Here we go with McCaffrey. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. At first glance, I actually wasn't sure that he got it, but he ended up getting it by about a full yard. He certainly did, but it took a little effort, didn't it? Took some nice push, a little crease inside, and some determined running to make sure that he got the first down. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. They'll try to run with McCaffrey. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Give him four on the carry there. It's second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. A lot of scrimmage at the four. Here's third and goal. Purdy now to throw. Touchdown, 49ers! George Kittle from four yards out. And the Niners have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Moody good with the extra point. And it's now 17-14. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And running with power here. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. 
And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Now Burrow. Got a man open, it's Chase. Loose inside the 30. And finally taken down at the 15. A big play there on the catch and run. 58 yards. Just a breakdown there defensively. It looked like someone got their wires crossed because no one seemed to pick him up at all. He's running free, and there's not a quarterback in the league who's going to miss that throw. That's a huge play. From the red zone now, here's Burrow first down. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. Now Burrow to throw on second down. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. It was Eric Armstead fighting his way through that time to record the sack. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. On third down, Burrow. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. McPherson's kick is good, and that will tie things at 17 all. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Niners set to take over on offense. And that last touchdown drive they had very balanced. How key is that balance? It's huge because most of the time when we talk about balance is run, pass, almost 50-50. But most of the times when you talk to offensive coaches, they say balance is we do what we want when we want to. <laughs> and that means that they're ahead of the defense, keeping them on their heels. Yeah, they imposed their will on that last drive. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Jennings was the one he was looking for, and that'll bring up second down. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. 90 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. 
They've been running it well all game, and why not? The big guys up front, they're just having a ball, creating monster holes for their guys to run through. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. On first down, this is McCaffrey. Oh, he faked it with a jump. Now he's got some room. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that. The nickel look. Five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little. And oftentimes, you can run the football effectively against that defense. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. Pretty slow complete here to IU. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 16. Seven catches for him now in this last one. A first down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. And his throw's going to be incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. McCaffrey running up the middle. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. This offense so far on third down, they're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This will be third and six. And he'll go down, brought down at the 20 yard line. Logan Wilson, the one who got in there and dropped him to the ground. And they weren't in zone coverage, they were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team that had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. And his kick is right there. It's good. And with that, they take the lead here, 20 to 17. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? So after the made field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ballgame. 
They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 80 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. So first and 10 now from the 30. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. Short throw to Smith. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll show the defense. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder. You think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. McLeod to return it. It'll go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. Shifts by him. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 43. A handoff, McCaffrey running right. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Another run with McCaffrey on second down. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. The carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And a nice job there, skipping away from the one tackle and ends up getting five yards out of that. Second down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You take in charge. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. 
But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some touchdown. Christian McCaffrey, 26 yards. And the 49ers are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. The Bengals set to take over. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And a loose football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Now Burrow loses the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And down inside the red zone at the 19-yard line. Following the fumble recovery, Purdy. This is Jennings. And the 49ers are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and, take, and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Out of the pistol, McCaffrey. And across the chalk, into the end zone, it's a 49er touchdown. Christian McCaffrey with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the 49ers are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. Now Moody for the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Cincinnati set to take over once again. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, 
They were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. A gain of eight there on the play, and it'll be second in a couple. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. So it was already a gain on the completion, but tack on some more with that penalty. Absolutely, and no matter what angle you're making the tackle from, you can't grab the face mask, and that's just putting your defense on its heels just a little bit more. So now factoring in the face mask, here's first and ten. Here's Burrow. Here's Higgins out of the right side. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. I really like the angles that the tacklers came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cutback. The sideline's there, so you can only go so far outside. And they were able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they use your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline. You know something? He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport stake. All in all, no gain on the play, and it'll bring up third. Late in the game, he's certainly doing everything in his power to buy time for his guys to make a play. But in this case, he's surrounded, and all he has room to do is to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now it's Burrow. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. That is Nick Bosa from out on the edge who worked his way in for the sack. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but... Definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack. Just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. It's Logan Wilson there to bring him down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed an intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make 